rarely, if ever, will a photo look its best straight out of the camera. But because of all the work we've done with lighting, light modifiers, and white balance, we're really close. All we need are some subtle edits to go from this unedited photo to this spotlight ready one. No complex photo makeovers here. In this section, I'm walking you through the exact approach I use to edit surface-based photos in Adobe Lightroom Mobile and Adobe Lightroom CC for desktop. The reason I prefer Lightroom over Photoshop is that it's plenty powerful for surface-based photography and it's easy to learn, to use, and to understand. Plus, it comes in both a desktop and a mobile version, so you can easily jump between the two without learning a whole new application. Plus, any presets you create on one version get saved to the cloud so you can use them on both mobile and CC if you ever jump between the two. Photoshop, on the other hand, is a more powerful editing tool, but it's more power than most of us need for surface-based photos, which makes the learning curve a lot steeper. So for this course, we're sticking with Lightroom. In this section, we'll first edit a light and bright photo by adjusting light, color, and white balance. Next, we'll do the same for a dark and moody photo with a focus on the difference between the two. After that, I'll show you how to apply an effect that combats any uneven lighting that the viewer's eye perceives as glare and that we weren't able to fix with flags. Finally, I'll show you how to save your settings as a preset so you can apply them to the other photos in your shoot. It is such a time saver. The whole time, I'll be showing you where I place every slider and why. We'll take everything step by step and focus on the functions that are most useful for your photography. And if you're watching this from the future, your Lightroom layout may look different from mine, but the functionality should be very similar. So let's get familiar with the light panel and how to use Lightroom Mobile. Start by importing your photo. On mobile, select light along the bottom of the screen. On CC, select the slider button and light is the top panel. Selecting light reveals sliders for exposure, contrast, and more. I always start with exposure and go down the list, adjusting each one and then making small tweaks at the end if needed. When you edit your own photos, the position of your sliders will be different from mine and from one photo to the next because of differences in lighting conditions, shooting angle, camera settings, and where you place your props. But the direction you move each slider should be the same for 99 if not 100% of your light and bright photos. Exposure adjusts the brightness of your entire photo. It's like a dimmer switch in a room. As I move the slider to the left, the whole photo darkens. As I move it to the right, the whole thing gets bright and quickly. Small exposure adjustments lead to dramatic changes in brightness. Remember back to earlier steps when I recommended intentionally underexposing photos in camera because we can brighten them in Lightroom. This is where that comes in. Depending on how bright the unedited photo is, I typically place the exposure slider somewhere between plus 0.2 and plus 0.4. For this photo, I like the look around plus 0.2. It looks a bit overexposed, but that's okay. The other sliders will fix that. And if they don't, you can always come back and reduce exposure at the end. As I adjust the other sliders, focus in on the metal rack, chocolate chips, and the grain in the surface in the background to see how they change. Next is contrast. Contrast adjusts the difference between the light and dark areas of your image. Moving the slider to the left decreases the contrast, which flattens it. Light areas look darker and dark areas look lighter. See what's happening to the metal rack? Moving it to the right makes the contrast more dramatic. Dark colors get darker and light colors get lighter. With most photos, I set contrast between plus 10 and plus 30. Here I'll go with a plus 28. Highlights controls the brightness of the lighter parts of your image. Move highlights to the left to darken the lighter areas and increase detail. See the subtle increase in texture of the ice cream? The ice cream looks more textured because we darken the light areas. Move highlights to the right to brighten the light areas and decrease detail. I always decrease highlights to pull out detail and usually place my slider somewhere between negative 20 and negative 80. Sometimes I even pull it all the way left to negative 100. Here I like to negative 70. You really can be pretty bold with the highlight slider for most photos. Shadows is highlights alter ego and it controls the brightness of the darker parts of the image. Keep your eye here as we move the slider. Move to the left to darken shadows and their details. Move to the right to brighten shadows and increase their once hidden details. 
Since I'm all about increasing detail to make product packaging look extra attractive and food look extra enticing, I always move shadows to the right. How much I move it varies a lot from photo to photo. If the darkest colors in the photo aren't very dark, you can get away with moving it to plus 50 or higher. If the image contains dark colors that I want to keep dark, like the metal rack and the chocolate chips, then I'll only increase shadows a little, maybe plus 10. Whites controls the white point while mostly leaving dark areas alone. Move left to make whites look more gray. Move right to make white areas even more white. I always increase whites to make white areas crisper. Where I place the slider depends on the image and ranges from plus 10 to plus 60. As a very general rule, I go easy on the whites, around plus 10 to plus 30 or so, for images containing a lot of dark objects and a little heavier on whites, like plus 30 or above, for images with mostly light colored objects. For this photo, I settled on a white point of plus 35 because I really want to enhance the white of the ice cream in the bowls, but I don't want to go so far that I wash out the metal rack and the chocolate chips. Finally, blacks controls the black point while mostly leaving light areas alone. Move left to deepen the darker areas. Move right to brighten black areas and make them look more gray. I always move left to make black stand out, but not so far that any colors look unnatural, like the cones. For most of my light photos, that's between negative 10 and negative 70. Here, I went with negative 30. Finally, assess your photo for overall brightness. If it's looking too bright, Go back to exposure and take it down a touch. Now let's compare the original to the edited version. You can do this on mobile by touching and holding the photo with your finger. In Lightroom CC, press the backslash to toggle back and forth. You can see that we didn't make any dramatic changes, but the photo looks brighter overall and the ice cream looks more enticing. If you notice that the cones also look better, that's because I punched up their color using the color panel, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. Here's another great function. To reset a slider back to zero position, double tap the circle on mobile. In Lightroom CC, double click the name of the slider. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but it'll save you a ton of time over trying to drag it back to zero manually. Also, if you're on desktop and forget what each slider adjusts, hover over the word and it'll tell you the definition. So let's summarize the light edits. A little increase in exposure goes a long way. Slider position will be different for every light and bright photo, but the direction almost never changes. Highlights and blacks to the left, everything else to the right. I'll say that again. Highlights and blacks to the left, everything else to the right. And that's it for the light panel. Open your workbook and let's explore it to start building your editing formula. Your action items for this lesson are, get familiar with the light panel by downloading and editing the ice cream photo we edited here. Rewatch this lesson, following along as I edit and apply the same edits I do. Don't worry about the color of the cones. We'll learn about color adjustments in the next lesson. Determine your editing preferences by resetting the light edits to zero and editing the ice cream photo the way your eyes like it. Import three of your own light and bright photos into Lightroom and edit each one using the light panel and the principles of highlights and blacks to the left, everything else to the right. See if you agree with these slider directions or not.